Hey, doing YouTube? It's Will from Will Development. It's my 335th weekly update. Coming right out of the Orlando Strongman 3 competition I did last Saturday. Did get footage. Uh, I haven't posted anything on Instagram or anything like that just because uh, Sunday I was just too lazy to sit down and do it. And then I was like, you know what, I'll just do it on Saturday next week. Do a comp recap. Uh, the footage will go up probably on Wednesday on the channel with everything. Managed to stay out of last place, got four out of five guys, which is, I'm happy for. It's uh, first competition where I didn't zero anything, and I didn't come last. So, that that felt good. There were some little mistakes here and there I made, um, especially on the medley. I know I could have done a little bit better there. Um, and rewatching the footage over and over and just dissecting and going, all right, yeah, you were too slow between these transitions, things like that. Uh, too much thinking here and there, that sort of thing. Uh, but it was good. It was good. I'll do a full uh, recap. I'll probably put one out Wednesday. I may, let me just record it later, um, a full breakdown of it, and then I'll put out the footage uh, one of those days. I might just release them both at the same time, just because it's easier that way. But yeah, it was a really good time. And, uh, you know, like every, every competition, certain things changed midway through the comp, which are challenging, and then certain uh, positions you're put in are challenging, and, uh, and that's, I mean, that's strongman, though, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not all that upset about it. It's, you know, it's just sometimes certain things happen, and like a human being, you know, you go, man, well, why is this happening to me, you know what I mean, but... It is what it is. And um, I went out there. Did I do my best? Probably not. I think there was some places where I look back and I go, yeah, I could have definitely done better here, that sort of thing. Maybe I was leaving too much in the tank here and shouldn't have, that sort of thing, you know. But uh, <clears throat> at the end of the day, I got a positive result and felt some form of redemption for my last comp. And now I'm looking forward to doing... Miami is in April, where I am hopefully going to stay out of last place. We'll see. There's a lot more guys in that one. I'll have to rely on my strengths, which is honestly just the yoke and the farmers, and work on my weaknesses within those events, which is going to be the transfer between the two. Uh, but my speed is good, so I, I'm just going to have to work on my transitioning between those two and making sure that speed there is consistent and then I think that that one event will will keep me out of the bottom um, because the press is going to be a tough one I'm moderately confident that come come game day I'll be able to uh, get the axle which is going to be 230 uh, I should be able to hit that for at least one but the log is definitely going to be uh, it's going to be a, a bit of a white whale for me so we'll, we'll I mean you know it's just just gonna have to work and Get as close as I can and just do my best. And then there's that damn bag toss. That that's gonna be that's gonna suck. It's a pretty high bar to throw it over to, and I'm I'm not good at that event. And I've been at least once a week just doing bag tosses. Just let's get let's try to do this movement. And just make it familiar and make it as good as we can. And uh, what's the other event there? Stone over bar. Um, should do a little bit better this time. I'm planning on using tacky. And I've got uh, stone sleeves now so I can train the actual event more. I'll still be doing probably once a week just with no um, no guards, no sleeves, just because I, I enjoy that kind of lifting, especially with stones. But the problem is it just tears you up so much to the point where you, you can't... It, it's hard to do it twice in one week uh, just because you're just you have just open sores on your arms basically so I'm hoping that basically I'll, I'll be able to do one day with sleeves and then one day without and just do that sort of thing and then day of we'll, we'll see what happens I think it's gonna be stone over bar with like a 230 or a 240 stone something like that and I with so much training I did for the stones I got to the point where I could actually wrap the 200 uh, for like two or three or four even on, on a really good day I was able to get four in a row um, over a bar about this ish high um, so that that's that's good I enjoy 
I'm glad I was able to get that far, but there's always more to go, so that's what we're looking forward to. But like I said, I'll, I'll do a full comp breakdown in another video. This one, we'll just talk about the training this week. Uh, pretty much the same schedule, just some of the movements are changing. Um, still squatting, um, but I'm putting a little more emphasis on my deadlift because there's a, there's a max deadlift event at uh, Miami's, and I've hit 475 in the gym. I would like to hit at least that in a competition, that way I can say I've got that number. Um, it'd be great to pull even more, it'd be great to actually break the 500 number, uh, which you never know, might, might be able to do it. Um, if I can get to the point where I'm consistently pulling like 450 in the gym, which I've got two months, um, it's possible. I mean, I just pulled 400 for doubles the other night, and it didn't feel... The second set was rough. But the first set felt pretty okay. So, if I can get to the point where I'm pulling like 450 consistently in the gym, I think 500 could be there on game day. Um, I mean, hell, the most I had ever lifted was like 445 or something like that before I hit that 475, and I'd not even touched heavy weight leading up to that. The heaviest weight I had touched was literally 400. And then the very next day I was deadlifting again and just, it was just there, 4, 475. So it's definitely possible. I know I'm capable of it, um, but it would be awesome to pull at least that in a competition and then possibly even more. That'd be awesome too. But Monday we did some squats, um, did sets of six, just moderate weight, 245, working that back up. And those were like, that was my perfect day. All those reps were perfect, ass to grass, high bar. That was actually feeling pretty good too. Um, super setting those with pull-ups, pro tip, not pro, pro tip. Um, work your kind of back work in between sets of other stuff. It's really not that hard to do like a set of squats and then go do some pull-ups in between. It's really not. It's uh, And it's a great way to get that work in, in between stuff. Because, I don't know, pull-ups really don't tire me out that much. Not as much as, say, squats or deadlifts. So it's like, yeah, I can do deadlifts and squats, specifically squats, and not be totally dead and then just go do some pull-ups afterward. Um, then did deadlifts, and it, this is what I mean about my deadlift. Like, it was just one of those things I hadn't pulled conventional in so long. I was doing, just practicing the Bavarian style for so many weeks leading up to this that, like, just even pulling 345 was, like, rough. Like, it was slow, and it wasn't... It was fine, it was just slow. It wasn't as fast as it should be off the floor. But I uh, got through it, and then I did a bunch of sandbag throws, too. Working back in with the axle, um, probably going to work on cleans tomorrow, was just doing out of the rack on Tuesday. Um, getting right back into it, I was still a little sore from the comp. Um, it wasn't crazy bad, but it just... It was good that my... I was doing more volume work, so I was just programmed to do sets of eight, and I just did 155, and those actually went pretty well. Um, working on different styles of push pressing, dead stop versus coming down, getting right back into it and exploding back up. Um, because this is a clean and press event, I'm probably not going to be doing the uh, catch and press method too much. going to be working on the dead stop because that's basically what I'm going to be doing at the comp, so I want to try to mimic that as much as possible, even out of the rack. Uh, let's see, and then Thursday, yesterday, was actually really good. It was uh, it was my heavy day for squats, first heavy day in a while, and uh, worked up to 315 for sets of two. Uh, the first set was actually pretty good. Um, the first rep of the first set, I was like, oh wow, I was actually happy with how well it went. I was a little nervous. Wasn't sure if my body was really ready for it. Um... Then the second set, the first rep was like, ooh, that was a rough one. Do it. Just do it. And uh, and I did it. And uh, the guy I was training with at the day said, yes, you looked like a shrimp at one point, but you did it. He was like, it was more of an ass to grass good morning. And I was like, honestly, I'll take that at this point. And that kind of goes back to one of these things. I don't know if I've talked about it here, but I, I've talked about it before to some people I know, where it's like 80% of the work you do, maybe even 85, should be perfection. Focus on perfection. And then there's another 15 to 20 percent of your lifting where you just need to fucking lift. Don't worry too much about your form for like 15 to 20 percent. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's like, here's the logic. If you can lift 110 percent of your max, 
but your form goes from 10 out of 10 to 7 out of 10, that's going to help get you stronger still. And the odds of you getting injured, you know, let's 7 out of 10 again, pretty low. Now, if your form drops to like a 1 out of 10 where it's just ew, your injury risk goes up. But it's one of those complicated things where it's like, but the body gets used to what you do. So if you lift with bad form all the time, is your injury risk going up or is your resiliency going to go up? So it's one of those things. For my money, I say on main lifts, form is very important, probably 85% of the time. For accessories, 100% of the time, keep that form as best as you can. There's no reason to, like, max out on, like, I don't know, rows. Like, I guess penlay rows are different in a way because it's explosive, but, like, just regular rows, I mean, keep that shit as good as you can. I mean, it all matters about intent, too. It's a very nuanced topic with so much shit that's just, like, it would be impossible for me to give good advice without being given a specific situation, basically. But my point is, just because those two two reps out of four were kind of icky, I feel fine, I'm not injured, and I now have that confidence to know that I'm capable of doing that again. And to be fair, high bar, I've only hit 315 with high bar very few times in my life. It's always been low bar. Um, and then that's a body weight PR too. I've never been 190 squatting that much. So, so that feels good too, knowing that even though I'm lighter, I'm still as strong as I was at a heavier weight. So that's, you know, it's, it's sometimes those, those really rough sets are confidence builders, uh, even if they look like total hell. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. As long as you're not consistently lifting that way, I think that's the best way to put it. You'll probably be okay. Hell, and even then, who knows, right? And then tonight, I decided to swap out flat bench for incline bench. Um, was doing flat bench for a while. Things are flat bench, do what it do, goes up. But uh, I figured, you know what, I need to start focusing on more incline bench, that sort of thing, because that movement's probably going to benefit me more as a strong man. And, um, you know, if I want to add another press day in the week, I'll just do flat bench then. Um, and I definitely felt it. It was, it was surprising. I was expecting to be able to do slightly more than I was able to. I mean, I worked up to like 185 for like a set of four at one point, but those four were really tough. And I know a big part of it's just I'm not used to the movement. But at the same time, I was like, man, you know, I flat bench. I mean, I could do 185 for probably 20 reps if you really wanted me to. But just that changing of that angle made it so much harder. And on top of the fact I'm doing them paused. Um, I really want to work on that explosiveness right off of the chest. So theory being, if I'm in a laid back position and I've got the tightness there, I'm in a, in a more advantageous position than, say, directly overhead pressing. But if I can get that power off the chest better by using incline as almost an accessory to it, it'll increase it. And then, especially doing pause reps, um, probably dead stop might even work better, um, or, or pin pressing, um, might even work better uh, than, than pausing. But I like the idea of still being able to do that sort of rep work and, and forcing me to keep the tightness because the weight's in my hands, not because I have to keep the tightness in order to do the next rep. So that's kind of my logic there. And, uh, I mean, hell, incline, it, it'll probably help my flat bench, too. If I can get to the point where I'm incline benching, like, 250, my flat bench will probably go up, too, just because it's a similar movement. Lay down more advantageous. My triceps will be stronger because of it. My shoulders will be stronger. Everything should go up because of it. Overhead, all that. So... Looking forward to the future, look forward to the comp recap and the footage from the competition coming out next week sometime. Uh, should have some time Saturday night, probably, to do some work on that. And, yeah, don't be afraid to just shut up and lift sometimes. And if you are, then what's your excuse?